to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Happy Friday. We are back, sort of. Well, yeah, we're, we're, we are definitely back. The it's important a, people are back. It is a two-man band. Hey-oh! It is a two-man band. What are we, uh, which two Beatles would we be? Oh, we're definitely Ring or Ringo. No, Jason is Ringo. Jason's Ringo. We are uh, Paul and John. John, for yeah, sure. I was gonna say, for sure. We're oh, here. Over under on disparaging comments made towards Jason. Eighteen. I'll take. I'll take the over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Jason is out today. Uh, he is spending time with his children. They have some very important Christmas performances. Absolutely. And so we. Uh, we have let him off the hook. He is he is with his kids and his family, and that is fine. And it's, we are we are here. It's the season, man. Yeah, the season. it is. The se- it's also the season for children being ill. <laughs> yeah. As uh, another one of my children fell this morning, to uh, to strep throat. We got <sighs> two streps and one cough in the house. So yeah. fortunately, you can't catch that through a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's beneficial. If, and the parents are okay. Me if and, our me listeners and the wife. could catch. The diseases that the the children have brought into the house. <laughs> that's the that's the worst part. When we had our first child, it was like the first two years, he caught everything and we yep. caught everything from him. Oh hell yeah! Because wherever he was with other kids, it was just let's just fully give him every disease that exists in two years. Once school starts, yeah, I I deck my house out like <laughs> ET, where it's just hazmatted out. And so I don't want to touch anybody. Put a button on the wall that sprays Lysol yeah. in the whole house, <laughs> like every 30 seconds. Well, welcome to the show. It is Friday, December 18th. We are finishing up the fantasy forecast for week 15 of your playoffs right now. We're going to go through the uh, injuries and kind of give you our read on the injury situations and who's starting, who's sitting. We will uh, have a, a little bit longer mailbag today, answering some playoff questions and some questions from the listeners and and try to get those out there for you. And then we, uh, I don't think Chris Meany's going to join us on today's show. We, if if he doesn't, if we don't get him on the show, we will absolutely tweet out his information. We just we felt the so, mail the mail bag was pretty important today because people are trying to win. We are we like to give the daily information, but we're clearly a season long focused uh, show, so we want our information the best it can be. Uh, semifinals, man. It is big, or semi. It is big time. And uh, <laughs> Jason got Jason got a big game from Mike Evans last night against me. Yep. Uh, I unfortunately, I mean, it's very rare when I don't see a primetime game. Last night, I did not get to watch that game live because I was with my children watching Star Wars. Sometimes you got to go to Star Wars, and so no spoilers. Don't worry about that. Oh, that's uh, Mike would probably run out of this room. I'd be doing the show by myself. That is. That is accurate. But I've got a, I, I've got a good comparison for it, which should encourage people. It was a very good movie. Very, very good movie. Uh, LeBron and Michael Jordan. Oh, there we go. Okay. That's right. my comparison. I, All right. Love it. I feel it. like some people, if, if some people think LeBron's the best player in the world, then uh, what are you to argue with them? Right? That's true. That's uh, but if you like Jordan, that's okay. They're, you both, gotta, they're both pretty good. You do got to be careful with the overhype, though, because then, then the people come in. No, I know. Or can I don't know? Can you overhype the new Star Wars? Movie? <laughs> Probably not, based on the uh, the people that were around us last night. <laughs> oh, I man, I wish I could have gone. It would, it would probably been awesome. Yeah, we stood everyone out, in their robes and stood out in the cold, <laughs> froze our our toes off before they let us in the theater. But the kids had a blast. We had a blast. Ate too much food. It was good stuff. So hey, if you want to follow the show on Twitter, you can just do so at the FF Ballers. We're on the Fantasy Sports Network. We're on YouTube. You can watch the show. Real quick comment on YouTube. I made a mistake yesterday when we were recording the video <sighs> portion. So, and it was the worst day to do that. Like I've never done that before, but I hadn't, I, I wasn't recording the beginning of the show. And so we missed about five, 10 minutes of the show before I started. AKA the best part of the, of and the it show. just happened to be that that was the part <laughs> where Jason was wearing the Darth Vader mask and doing jazz hands at the same moment. And so if you, if that's an important part of your life, I'm sorry we couldn't give it to you. It did happen. This is not a right. It's not, not a situation of if if the tree falls in the forest, does it make <laughs> a sound? Yeah, no, yeah, we no we proof. saw it. Yeah, we saw it. It did happen. 
All right, so quick question. What are the fantasy implications of last night's game? I think a different game than people expected. Obviously, a really good game for Case Keenum from an efficiency standpoint. You saw great production from Tavon Austin if he was a spot start for people. Um, what else did you get from that game? Uh, it, it, what I wanted to see from Tampa Bay was I want to see Mike Evans force-fed the ball. We got that. You did. And the, the a lot of the game, though, unfortunately, Jameis Winston was getting highly pressured, and you could see it in his body language and his demeanor of of overthrowing. Jason was uh, clearly watching very carefully because he has Mike Evans, but he was, kept writing. He's like, wow, if Mike Evans were eight feet tall, then Jameis Winston would be having a great night. Yeah. Because yeah. that's how badly he was overthrowing him. However, like Andy said, Evans, monster game. So that just builds up a nice confidence moving forward to next week that he will get those targets. Hopefully the line can hold up a little bit better. Aaron Donald from the Rams is a bad, bad man. My goodness. There were some J.J. Watt comparisons with him earlier in the week. He is awesome. Yeah. He had, now, he didn't sack. He didn't register a sack, but whatever. He was disruptive. He, he was a main cause of getting in Winston's head. Uh, and so to the Rams side, clearly we got to start Case Keenum moving forward. <laughs> yeah, going forward. One week. You, Championship week, Case Keenum. Hope you had that Keenum Brit stack. Austin Severian, Austin Severian Jenkins. Oh, we know what he did. Oh, the garbage man can. It don't matter. <laughs> they count whether they're the first two minutes or the last two minutes. And, you know, I, I was uh, an advocate for streaming Safarian Jenkins. He certainly didn't get force fed the ball. I expected everything that happened last night to happen except for the fact that I thought he would pick up the Vincent Jackson slack. It wouldn't just be passes to Mike Evans that he could catch and couldn't catch. Yeah. Uh, and he made some great – Evans made some great catches. For yeah. for somebody who was maligned for drops, the, well, toe, he, the toe drag on this – I know he still oh, – yeah. He still had a, a monster hands drop, but he he had some great plays as yeah, well. Yeah, some good plays. And he was playing I, – I think Tampa fans should be really encouraged and fantasy owners for Jameis Winston in years to come because he's shown, I think, that he has – um, what would you call it? Like franchise QB uh, flashes throughout the season, yeah, and, I, an, and an ascending leadership type of. I, I, I'm impressed with him. I am. I am as well. I think he's going to be very good. Which th that's great news for the league and great news for fantasy. Absolutely. So let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right, Sam Shields, the cornerback for the Green Bay Packers, is out again. There was some talk earlier in the week that he was starting. And so I want to uh, make some adjustments to some of the projections I gave out there for, especially Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree. People asked me questions very early in the week. I wasn't really high on those guys or Derek Carr. It wasn't that I was super low on them. It, I just wasn't excited about the matchup. Uh, my feeling about that game is, has kind of changed throughout the week. And so... Uh, with Shields being declared out, I think those guys have upside now, and I, and I just want to make sure that's out there. Do you agree with me? I completely agree. We saw earlier in around the middle of the season when Sam Shields went out. Now, uh, Green Bay also had some other injuries that compacted into, his, into this. But what started off as a great defense, when they got those injuries, all of a sudden looked like a really bad defense. And you take, you take the best cornerback off of a team – and that absolutely disrupts the defense. You have to shift guys into different positions. Uh, and it just opens things up for the, the opposing offense. So I do agree that it gives a bump to uh, the Raiders' passing game. I mean, if you remember to the beginning of the year, the Packers' defense was a startable, uh, oh, they were very great. viable yes. defense, and, and they got disrupted, like you said. The other point of news I want to bring up, dynasty implications, keeper implications. Uh, I just wrote Calvin in the cap, all right? Calvin Johnson is uh, set to count twenty four point zero zero eight million against the cap in twenty sixteen. That point zero zero eight is the that's, that's the key. I mean, if it was just like twenty three point nine, twenty three, twenty four, fine, no big but, deal. But you go point zero zero eight over, then we got a serious problem, major issue. So now you've got Megatron. He's thirty one next season. A little bit of uh, what was the word you used? Caution or was it? Uh, uh oh, is what Jason said to describe him. Yeah, I think I said aging, but aging. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not the same guy that was the kind of Odell Beckham Jr., Julio, Antonio Brown level fantasy player. Now you've got this variable of the cap number being so huge, a rebuild in Detroit potentially. So if they cut him, they'd save eleven million dollars. They still have to take a twelve million dollar cap hit. 
But do you think he'll be back? And if he's not, what is I mean, is is Calvin no longer a uh, an upper echelon keeper? Uh, what is his dynasty dynasty I, implication? Man, uh, you can't call him an upper echelon keeper with all the uh, with all the other wide receivers that have that are emerging. Uh, it, what's funny is, I mean, we we had talked about this way way long ago at the in the preseason of where we were trying to figure out where is Calvin going to be? You know, w- will he have this decline? Will he still be uh, an elite level guy? And our kind of the arguments of when he was lower, I eventually moved him back up in because I thought he would have a better season. But my argument was everyone else, the, the other guys, it's not so much Calvin. It's you, you're going to have guys emerge like Julio. Well, Julio had already emerged, but and Allen Robinson, Evans, these guys are, are now rising up. But moving forward, Detroit has – they have to do something. That That's what you know. There's no way you can have a uh, a 31-year-old with $24 million as your cap. We we lived this in Arizona. I was going to say, exactly. It's, it's very, very similar to what happened with Larry Fitzgerald. Thankfully, we were able to restructure. And even more thankfully is that Larry was a – recognized where he was that he didn't have that – dominant outside presence anymore and he said okay well use me as you can and and he's we've seen he's been great so, so a lot might be tied into calvin's willingness to accept what he is now or right. what he is becoming as opposed to saying hey i deserve to be a 24 million dollar cap hit right now because i'm still elite and i'm still absolutely calvin johnson yeah can they restructure can they tear that contract up get some more help in there uh like the cardinals have done with floyd and john brown it, yeah. And I think Calvin can still be great. So obviously something that we will be exhaustively looking at in the offseason, preseason, and things like that. So uh, the big headlines today on Friday is basically injury reports and things like that. So we're going to go ahead and do in and out and get Mike and my uh, – I'll chime in as well. Normally I let you guys do this, but I'll chime into what I think about these guys uh, as you open your uh, soda can. LaCroix. Oh, you're LaCroix? Yeah, here LaCroix. we go. LaCroix. What's it going to be, McFly? <laughs> Are you in? Or out. All right, in or out, Matt Hasselbeck. Ah, uh, man, I I don't think he's going to play. If he does play, it's going to take one shot, one to two shots, and you're going to knock him out. The guy, if you watched him play last week, every time he got hit to the ground, he was he was tapping out, man. He did not like in that moment. He said, "I, I don't want to get back up." He would because Hasselbeck's a tough dude. I'm going to say out. But I, I lean towards out. Uh, which makes Houston's defense just all the more uh, incredible. <laughs> well, so, I, I mean, Whitehurst isn't a turnover guy, but as long as you're getting points for, uh, for he's a, opposing he's yardage yeah. yardage and uh, offensive score, then he's right. going to be great. Running backs in or out, C.J. Anderson? I'm going with in. He practiced even on – and the, the highlight of the practice was on turf – so that which is rough on your feet and your ankles, so he's he's going to be in. Here's a big one. T.J. Yeldon. He's got to be out. You know what's crazy is he has the ability with his decision on this game or whatever takes place to f- severely disrupt fantasy owners because yeah. it's not so much the Yeldon owners that, oh, we get to put him back in. It's all the Denard Robinson signers that have been putting him in place above other guys. The Rawls owner that grabbed Denard Robinson. Oh, no. What happens if Yeldon? Everybody out there in the world wants T.J. Yeldon to take a week off. If you <laughs> – if Yeldon, I think that other than TJ Yeldon and the Yeldon Jaguars plays, uh, then all the waivers from this week are just just destroyed. With uh, Seattle having their situation of adding Michael back in, now if we put Yeldon back in, you're like, all these options on Tuesday, but Tuesday morning, oh, how glorious we have! We have backup options. Everybody, do not panic. And then if Yeldon plays, it's full and panic. So, suddenly, Fozzie Whitaker panic. rides to the <laughs> rises to the top. <laughs> Of this, of this heap. Oh, so yeah. I you're starting, think that TJ Yeldon will play. Do you? I do. I don't think he plays. But, but, but take this. Do not take this as canon here with TJ Yeldon. Right. We are giving opinion because we haven't got the Friday practice report yet. So today's report will tell you everything you need to know about Yeldon and what the coaches are saying. So that'll be a game time decision. I think. If, I don't think he'll be ruled out today, but I could be wrong. If you're starting Fozzie Whitaker and Tim Hightower in your playoff semifinals, let us know. Because we want to enjoy that moment. Absolutely, with you. yeah. That that's a, a great way to win a matchup and have the ability to mock your opponent for years to come. <laughs> uh, Spencer Ware, in or out? Oh, I'm gonna go with. I I think he's 
I think he'll play limited. Okay, Carlos Williams, in or out? Probably out. All right, wide receivers, big one. Alshon Jeffrey sat out Wednesday and Thursday with an illness, in not, or out? Not just an illness, but Wednesday a was, calf was a calf injury. Thursday, we didn't really get an update on the calf because it was uh, it's, it was said to be an illness. It sounds so John Foxy, dude. <laughs> it sounds John so Foxy. <laughs> it sounds so John Foxy to say, here's what he does. So he's having calf problems. He also gets sick. We're just going to say Thursday was all because of the sickness. Now that now the opposing team thinks Alshon Jeffrey's fine. I've seen him before. I need I need somebody with tremendous video editing skills. Just put forth like a a funny montage of John Fox with Foxy Lady <laughs> right, over right. the top. Not bad. Because they'll be tremendous. Well, I think now I'm picturing you know John Fox going over throwing some you know sneeze some pepper under the nose of Alshon <laughs> Jeffrey getting him to sneeze a few times and you're out for an illness and we don't we don't know what we do know is this Alshon Jeffrey and his calf have been an issue all an issue all year round runs over with like a thermometer yeah Alshon you you look you look pale he's like, he's like uh I'm fine I got a sore calf or whatever he's like no no you're getting bad <laughs> he's got the bubonic plague yeah so uh Monitor All Friday. humor aside, you're, you're, most of you owners out there are going, shut up and tell me whether my superstar <laughs> is going to play. And I don't blame you. And I actually think that uh, I'm concerned. So I'd have a backup plan in place. But if he, if he starts, he is. He's in. If, okay. he, if he plays, you got to play him. All right. Jarvis Landry. Interesting case here. He was limited Wednesday. He was out Thursday. Possible regression there. What's up with Jarvis Landry? That is bad news. If, to get downgraded to out on a Thursday – that's never something you want to see. If he can get in limited work today or or it gets uh, labeled as limited because it's mostly a walkthrough and yep. all those things, then I'll then I'll be okay. And Landry's the same thing. If he plays, uh, if he targets. plays football, he plays for uh, fantasy football. All right, let's do these ones. Uh, in or out, Alan Hearns? In. All right, Julian Edelman? I think he's going to be out. Okay, I'm going to say in on that one just to – uh, so pay attention and, there. And we disagree. Of You think if he's yes, in. Yes, we do. We disagree on it, that. You say if he's in, you're playing him. Yes. And for me, if he's in, I'm not playing him. Now, a, what's interesting there, and I don't want to linger too long, but I just want your comment. You had the same situation with, with Amendola coming back where Amendola was coming off the knee, and you were like, man, if he's if he's back, right. I'm going to play him. Why isn't that the viewpoint here? Is it because Amendola's there as well? It's it's more the injury, the actual injury. It's the actual injury of it was his foot. He broke his foot, a bone in his foot. Edelman's entire game is shiftiness, quickness, and cutting. So I don't see a situation where he's gotten back this quickly. I mean, these this Wolverine type healing. If Edelman is to play this weekend and play an entire game, I would be very impressed. Not right, saying it's impossible. Right. No, and and that's good perspective. And the truth is, is for me, even though I think I would start him. If you have somebody in the same tier, why risk the injury component? I try to reduce my variables of failure in fantasy right. football. There's so many variables of failure anyways. <laughs> I, I just pull back from any that are like I can induce upon the player. And if you – okay, let's compare him to, say, Gronk. Because, I mean, you got the same team. Maybe they treat him the same way. Gronkowski played limited snaps. Yep. Now, he happened to have a monster game because he had a touchdown and, and two big catches. But if Edelman – And who's to say Edelman would play a full – uh, second half if this game's put away for some reason. Either. That's my concern. Yeah. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, in or out? I think he's going to play. Dante Moncrief, in or out? I'm going to say out, and this is what is important about Dante Moncrief. If you're trying to get sneaky and slippery, Philip Dorsett is back. He 12, is, 14, 16 he, team leagues. He is cleared to play. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't start him. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm not saying start him, but... Pay attention. Put him on your bench. If you got a spot and you're... Put him on your bench, speculate. Maybe Moncrief misses some more time and Dorsett has a great game. And you think, hey, uh, next week Matt Hasselbeck, or maybe even Andrew Luck is back next week and, and Philip Dorsett is starting. Never who, know. Who knows? Who knows? All right, two more guys at the wide receiver position, Stevie Johnson and Kendall Wright. I'm going to go without for both. Me too. All right, four tight ends I want to mention. Greg Olson limited on Thursday. In or out? In. Tyler Eifert? I'm going to say out. Zach Miller? In Charles Clay, uh, probably out. But if he's on the football field, is is he actually out there? Right. Is he in or out on the field? <laughs> That's confusing. But man, 
Clay has been Clay's a good player. He's Clay just, has been disappointing for me. I yes, I love him. In, disappointing. I loved him in Miami, and they just they they're not game planning. It's for the him. same thing with Jordan Cameron. Loved him in Cleveland. Yeah, he's not getting attention. Yeah. It's just and this is one of the risks. I'm telling you, free agency always looks so juicy. It always looks great on paper because they pay these guys big money to come and play for them, and then the roles change. You know, it's just a, a strange thing, and we're gonna see it again this year. We'll give you all the you know, the insight to our thoughts on that as well. Before we get into the rest of the fantasy forecast, go through the matchups, uh, drop some knowledge on you in terms of who you can start and who you can't and get to the mailbag. I do want to thank the sponsor of today's show. We mentioned it yesterday. Uh, we're thankful for them for making this show possible. And that is pokerstars.net. It is easy to get started on pokerstars.net. You just go there. Uh, you click a button to install the software and all you really need to do is register with an email address. You can play for free as long as you want. You start with a thousand chips. You can reload for free a couple times every hour. And there are different types of games, high stakes games, uh, daily tournaments, lots of fun ways to play poker on pokerstars.net. And they're the biggest game in town. They are the largest poker site in the world. There are hundreds of tournaments every single day, and it's nice because you can play while you're traveling on your iPhone, iPad, Android device. It is so easy. So go over to PokerStars.net, set up a little club for your friends or your fantasy league. Try it out. We really like it. So check it out, PokerStars.net. All right, let's get into the forecast. Fantasy Forecast. You know, Fozzie Whitaker didn't look it never felt felt like a good start, but it really feels like a bad start when Mike Evans scores 20 on you oh. <laughs> on Thursday night football, right? Like now I'm at the point where I'm looking at it and I'm going, is there another Hail Mary play out there? I mean, that's, that's kind of a new aspect of fantasy football that didn't exist maybe five, six, seven years ago when Thursday night football wasn't every week when you didn't have, I mean, there's a Saturday game this week. There is it's not just set your lineup and lock and load. Everybody wants to do that. But if if Mike Evans last night, here's a good example. I'm playing Jason. He's got Mike Evans. If he put up a two last night, my position with my running back two becomes, I want a safe guy that gets me 10 points. If he puts up a 20, I start thinking, who's a home run candidate? Could I really start Christine Michael in this game? Ooh. Could I start somebody that has... Uh, the opportunity to break two long touchdowns. You know, I start right, thinking yeah, in yeah. terms of, and then I have Ivory and Marshall on Saturday night. And depending on what they do, that'll determine Saturday morning as well for me. And you kind of have to play back and forth, I think. Last week, you had Larry Fitzgerald have a bad Thursday. I was going to say, la last week, I sure could have used 20 points from Larry. Sure. That would have been nice. <laughs> but because of his bad game, I played, uh, I actually played Austin Sferian Jenkins over Gronk because I didn't know what Gronk was going to do, whether he'd be active on Sunday night. I was playing it safe. It might have been different had he put up 20. I might have played Gronk. So just some perspective. It, it, it's different. It's different than it used to be. So Panthers at the Giants. This is, believe it or not. Andy's almost upset of the week. Possibly grandly foolish. <laughs> That's not even a normal <laughs> sentence in the English language. That's why it's the almost upset because... We're not going all in on it. Here's the thing. We know this from New York. Every once in a while, they can put up offensive points on anybody. You have the best young wide receiver in the game. You have Eli Manning who can catch fire. And you have variables with the Carolina Panthers right now with a, an injured, injured Jonathan Stewart, a possibly limited Greg Olson. We don't know. Going on the road, a very good defense. I'm not saying this is a, a shoe-in, but I think it's possible. That's all I'm saying. I I, th I agree with you. I think it's possible. We saw the Panthers escape by the the skin of their butt against <laughs> against the uh, the Saints. I mean, uh, and the Colts and the Colts too. Uh, but I'm going I was going Saints recently. Of I mean, if you watch that game, the Panthers really should have lost that game. They but they didn't because they're a championship type team. So I I agree with you that it's very possible for uh, this to turn into a shootout. You saw Ruben Randall had a good game last week. Yeah, Rash Rubes. Rashad Jennings had a good game last week, and Odell Beckham Jr. was insane last Did week. Did you see the quotes from Coughlin when when people were asking about Jennings if he was going to get that kind of carries? Yeah, well, was he it? was he was saying, I, "Why do you why, guys care? Why do you guys care about this?" <laughs> uh, why don't you join my league, Tom? It's called uh, it's called a, a billion dollar industry, Tom. We pay your bills. Yeah, I, I'm always amazed that a head coach can be surprised the media wants to ask him a question. <laughs> 
It's like, how, how do you get paid what you pay? How do you get 70,000 people to come watch you in the stadium? Well, we do what we want to do, and you shouldn't know about it. Yeah, like, John we, Fox. We got a game going on here, Fox. Or not Fox. Uh, Coughlin. <laughs> we, got, we got to get it going. Uh, they probably hang out. All right. Cam, <laughs> Cam Newton. He's a locked and loaded starter. Yes. Uh, the running back situation in Carolina, if you had to just start a guy, is it Fozzie? It's Fozzie. <laughs> it's <laughs> Fozzie because the coach has given the nod. Yeah. And, and, and that's all you got right now. In a week of scrambling and scraping for information, uh, any kind of speculation, that's all we've gotten so far from, from anything uh, reported on Carolina is – is Ron Rivera saying, well, Fozzie will start. I think if this game's put away for Carolina, you'll see a you'll lot see. of opportunities for C- Cameron Artis Payne. Yes. If it's not, there's a trust factor, pass protection, keep Newton healthy, different aspects that go into play there, Tolbert, things like that. Ted Ginn, confidence. Uh, pretty solid this week. Pretty solid. I, I think he's got a, uh, I'll go 30% chance to have one of his Ted Ginn plays. Yeah, okay. So that that's good because Which, Ted Ginn's been doing that a little bit, and he's got a, a red hot, white hot quarterback. Let me ask you this: How many questions have you gotten on Twitter, uh, through our through the website, thefantasyfootballers dot com, that have said, "Would you? Uh, what is your concern level with Odell Beckham Jr. against Josh Norman?" I've gotten a few. You have, yeah. Okay, I have. Now, not, I I thought I would have some more, but I've gotten just how, a few of them. Proportional to the Julio question. Oh, no, not even close. See, I haven't gotten any. And I think it's interesting because... The p- people decided they made up their mind. I think Whoa. people just said, because Odell Beckham Jr. is coming into this game on fire, by the way, only... We looked this up. Doug Baldwin and him, they're separated in our league by about five points over the last five games, where Baldwin actually has outscored him because he got eight touchdowns to five for Odell Beckham Jr. But Beckham Jr. is now the number one receiver in most leagues in terms of fantasy points. Most receiving yards and most receptions ever in NFL history through 25 games for Odell Beckham Jr. 24 touchdowns in 25 games. He's good. Nobody's doubting it. And and I think the reports about Coffin putting him in the slot have given people a little bit of confidence. And he and he's he's got the physical ability to, to beat him. I don't know why people, you know, Julio had an okay game. Julio had an okay game after Josh Norman was not guarding him. Right. And he had one big play. And I think after Josh Norman was not guarding him. Okay. okay. So that's the difference is if they, if that this game's been, also at home, that other game was in Carolina. Right. But I say if, if the Atlanta Carolina game was close and Norman had stayed in the whole time, I think Julio Jones would have ended up with two catches. I, th- I think it would have been really, really bad. Uh, now the, the reports from the giants are who, who watched what happened when the, the coaching staff of Atlanta said, we're just going to put Julio out there against Norman and not try and, Take advantage of matchups. Why would we do that? Uh, Coughlin saw that and said, you know what? I, I think we're going to put Odo Beckham uh, in the slot some more because that's the smart thing to do. You Come know, on. Yeah, the, the Atlanta offense is just – I don't even like to think about it anymore. <sighs> it's so sad. Yeah, it's not good. So Eli Manning, though. People want to know, can you stream Eli Manning in this matchup? There uh, seems to be a lot of optimism towards it compared to what you might expect against the team. Panthers are fourth in the league in run defense, fifth against the pass, obviously have been on fire as a defense, but people still want to start Eli. I, Eli is not safe to me. Not safe. Not safe. Uh, we, we were talking about could, that, could it turn into a shootout? The game flow could do that. Do I think that's going to happen? Uh, probability says no, and I would much rather start a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick than Eli this week. All right, let's talk about that vaunted – Falcons offense <laughs> as they head to Jacksonville to take on the uh, Jaguars. The Jaguars are favored by three and a half points in this game. The over under in the game is 48. So we're expecting some points to be put on the, on the scoreboard, which I, I expect as well. You got Matt Ryan facing Blake Bortles. You've got the Devonte Freeman experiment that continues. And I have a lot to say about him. Ooh. You got the Yeldon Denard Robinson situation in this game. And then you've got Julio who, you know, hopefully free Julio. Sure seems like this would be the game for it. Uh, and then you got Allen Robinson, Allen Hearns, and Julius Thomas on Free the other side of the ball. Free everybody. <laughs> Free. Well, that'd be all right. I think all the owners in this game would take a 50-point. Uh, the problem is the Falcons have only scored 29 points in their last three games. Total. Total? I believe that's – is that two games or three games? Uh, that, oh. might be, that might be two games. But still, 
Not uh, good. Yeah, it's it's been a rough and outing. It's, what it's doing is it, everyone's starting Julio Jones. Yes. You saw last week. I mean, I Norman or not, it doesn't matter. The the game flow, eleven points in our league, whatever it is. Even the worst of games is an okay game. It's you know like Antonio Brown against Denver this week. Everybody's still rolling them out there. That being said, what do Devonta Freeman owners do right now? Because you might have other right. options. Right. Uh, you better have a great option. Freeman in this situation isn't my favorite. The Jaguars have uh, have been a decent running. 29 game. over the last three, by the way. That was accurate. Oh, 29 points in the last rough. three games. The, ja- the Jaguars have, have been a pretty solid running defense. But talking about game flow, I I think this one turns into a shootout with it, where I actually have confidence that Matt Ryan is an okay play. Uh, before you go crazy with that, there's guys I'd rather play over him. But we've seen uh, recently the the Jags get into a lot of these matchups where it's just going back and forth and who can score more points. And in in, in fantasy football, if you were talking to me, uh, let's say August, and you said, okay, it's it's my championship or my semi semi uh, championship. I was coming down to this. I got to make a decision: Blake Bortles or Matt Ryan. You wouldn't have even comprehended the question. My brain would have exploded. Uh, and then I would have thrown it in there. I would have been like, <laughs> and are you playing Devonta Freeman? And you would have been like, what? Uh, and if, if, <laughs> what I would have said is, wait, he's still on the team? Yeah, I know you would have. That was your that was a, oh, your man, one whiff. Freeman. That's, Captain well, whiff on that one. Yeah, I've been asked what was my biggest miss is I did not think Freeman was going to be very good. Yeah. So, But we're here, and Freeman has let people down a little bit with the offensive uh, failures. And people are seeing Carolina next week. And they're saying to themselves, what do I do? Because Devonta Freeman, do I trust him or would I rather play David Johnson? The, the thing with Freeman is uh, what he was doing in the middle of the year was historic pace of scoring touchdowns. I mean, you, which, yeah. you, that has to regress at some point. You can't stay on that kind of a tear, which is kind of a, that warning flag for Doug Baldwin where he's on – a historic type monster. You cannot tear. score 45 rushing touchdowns in a season. You it's cannot just, score 45 passing touchdowns in a right, season. Right, it's just it's not going to happen. So now you're getting the, that you got that touchdown regression and you've seen it, what Freeman can do and in half point and full point PPR, he's still been good. He just isn't winning you the week every when he had that stretch. When a guy has a games like that though, the name gets associated with those games. And so now you start looking at it, and, and if you bench him, you start saying, am I benching 40 points? Am I benching 30 right. points? Because you think in the context of those games. So that's the hard part. And we'll, we have a question, I think, in the mailbag that deals with it, so I won't linger there too long. But Alan Hearns, are you feeling confident about him? Yes. Alan Robinson had a weird game last week, one catch. One catch for one touchdown. They scored 50 points. He had one catch yeah. for a touchdown. It, yeah, it was it was a tough outing for Allen Robinson. But we do play. like we do like Denard if Yeldon's out. Absolutely, yeah. And we well, like Bortles. Just, yep. Okay. I, I like all the I like all the Jags. I like this game because I, I the forty eight. I'm I would take the over. That's that's not my uh, level of expertise to to tell you. I'm not advising you. You take that to the bookie. Sure. <laughs> sure. But but that's where I would go. All right. The Packers head to Oakland. Take on the Raiders. This is an interesting game. We've already talked about Carr and Cooper and Crabtree, how our feelings on those guys. So I'd like to get your opinion on the running backs and then also on Randall Cobb now that Mike McCarthy has taken over play calling. What are your thoughts on Cobb compared to where they were a couple weeks ago? Uh, on Cobb, uh, you got to have a, a rebuilt confidence that uh, McCarthy came out and he said, okay, I'm calling the plays. And there was an instant change in level of production for Cobb. I believe he had eight catches last week. He did. Which... That's what you need for Randall Cobb. He's you if if you expect for that baseline. If and you then expect, with a chance for a touchdown. Or if two. you expect a touchdown from Randall Cobb, you're you're not really looking at what Randall Cobb is good at. And he what he is great at doing is giving you a high volume of catches with an opportunity to score a touchdown because he plays for the Packers. So now that now that McCarthy's because the the transformation was instantaneous, that gives me a great level of confidence moving forward. The same with Lacey, where it has transformed. Unfortunately for Lacey owners, they are splitting that time. They're splitting the carries and snaps between Starks and Lacey, so Lacey can't just have the one of the, one of those unbelievable weeks where he's going to win you the game. I, I take that back. He could still do that on his limited work. It's just unlikely 
where uh, where last year at this time Lacey was just destroying. Well, everyone. I was just saying, and if he keeps having success like he's having, he might those carries yeah, might that, lean his direction that's more true, too. True. But you did see Stark succeed with smaller carry counts again last week, so I guess that would be a question. Would you ever would you flex Starks in this game? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the Raiders' defense, however, is only given up three point zero yards per carry since getting blown up by Adrian Peterson earlier in the year. They recorded 19 sacks over the last five weeks, but we still have confidence in the Green Bay offense traveling across the country, West Coast game. Yep, even though uh, a lot of people have been very disappointed with the Aaron Rodgers performance because he was a first-round pick. For If you had him on your team, you likely paid that premium pick, and so you're expecting you know, uh, close to 50 touchdowns high, or at least 40 and games of over 300 yards, multi-touchdown games every single week. And but he's not been bad. He he hasn't crapped your team. He almost did in that Lions game, but he saved you with that with the the hail mary. So he's still a very safe play. I'm not uh, I'm not starting other guys over Rodgers. He's he's still a, a an elite top uh, in, top five guy for me. I agree with you. All right, so the Browns head up to Seattle for uh, for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the Browns are going to have a good time? Yeah, they're heading up there for a good time. <laughs> heading up to Seattle for a good old time because you want to play Russell Wilson right now. Uh, and you certainly want your head coach to come out and say that you, oh, don't, God, what are you, doing? That you don't think Russell Wilson's an elite quarterback because that's not a motivating comment. <laughs> I mean, uh, Browns, I hope you take in the fish market and the space needle. You know... <laughs> Get some bang for your buck on this trip. Seriously. In I've, fact, if you don't show up for the stadium, it might not be a bunch different. I've, I've never been to Seattle. It's one of those places that I've always wanted to go. So for me, <laughs> enjoy it. You know, see the sights. Yeah, enjoy your time there because you're not going to enjoy it in the stadium. <laughs> this is going to be trouble. There's nobody who's playing at a higher level right now. Yes, the matches have been, have been cakewalks right now for Seattle, but uh, this is going to be trouble. The... When we put the uh, the line in into our, our dock here, the Seahawks, it could have changed. But they at the time, they were favored by 14 and a half points over two touchdowns. You don't see that a lot. No. no so, not at all. So, Russell Wilson, you are our sit of the week, obviously. <laughs> We've said that. Our honorary sit of the week. So, continue. He's had a perfect passer rating when they've gone empty set with four wide. Russell Wilson is just gnarly. Or five wide. Gnarly right now. It's just incredible. And the Seattle defense, the only thing that really worked great for Cleveland last week was Isaiah Crow actually ran the ball well. Seattle defense gives up about 44 yards a game on the ground. I mean, it's just uh, it's not a, a pretty picture there. You lost Hartline for the season, who is actually productive. Uh, you lost him. He's gone. You can't start. So the question for a lot of people is Barnage, right? Like, is it Barnage or Kelsey? Is it Barnage or Gates? Is Barnage? It, yeah, Barnage, <laughs> Barnage. So uh, what are your thoughts on Barnage? Because I'm I'm fading on him. I know Seattle's been not that great against tight ends, but it's a different Seattle defense right now than it was earlier in the year. I still like him. I think that he will get enough targets that he'll give you a, a, a decent outing. I think he's safe where – I don't his potential to have a monster game like he's been having throughout the year, probably on the lower scale of the probability, but he's he's still a safe guy. So when you're saying you're fading on him, who, what level of guy are you looking to play? Travis over? Kelsey. You'd play Kelsey over Barnage. I think I'd, I think I'd play Kelsey over uh, over Barnage this okay. week. Okay, because I like b playing against Baltimore and having kind of the upside of that equation. I just feel like uh, Baltimore feel, because the you feel like the offense for Baltimore is so bad. Well, more so that the uh, the yeah because the offense is so bad. The Chiefs will have the ball. They're at home. The Chiefs have a lot of you know. You saw Russell Wilson score five touchdowns against the 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 Ravens last week. Uh, the upside to me for Barnage, like you said, his potential to score is very low to me in this game. And so you need you know maybe he gives you a Jason Witten like performance. So are you are um, we talking to the point of you would grab one of these lower streamer guys like a a, a Ty, a Rudolph, a Richard Rogers? No, no, no. Okay, you're no, still no. Okay, hold your horses. No, I'm I would, trying to find. I, the no, that's fine. I wouldn't do that. The level, but I, I'm bumping him down. I'm going to bump Barnage down a little bit. Like I would, I would feel fine playing Julius Thomas over Gary Barnage. Okay, uh, maybe Ben Watson. 
that would be – but it, I, mean, I know Barnage is delivered for most teams, and you don't have that option. So uh, the other thing I just want to say, you're starting Doug Baldwin. Are you starting Tyler Lockett? I would flex Lockett. I, I don't have extreme confidence uh, in him, but because Seattle has been scorching, it, you got to stay in the flames with that offense, and it's just grabbing a piece, and Lockett has been – uh, his production is is increasing. What you want to see from a rookie wide receiver is if they're going to start slow, you want to see that ascension at some point, and that has started to happen. So that's, I guess, the confidence you can you can gain for if you want to play Lockett. But he's not a guy I'm going to slot into a wide receiver two role. All right, so we can't move on from this game until we talk about the the running backs Oy. for Seattle. We'll get to the rest of the games, but we have to do that real quick. Fred Jackson, Bryce Brown, Christine Michael. Christine Michael's back. Yeah. And he actually has an opportunity. Yeah. There is a chance for Michael here. I don't have I don't have confidence really in starting any of these guys because it is a messy situation where I, I don't know, man. I think you're getting all or nothing if you start one of these guys. And if I had to make a decision of I have to play one of those guys, I would I would lean Brown. I lean Brown at this point. It's very interesting because when they uh, the coaching staff, Pete Carroll, uh, offensive coordinator, when they were talking about Christine Michael, they asked him, you know, like does he uh, does he know that it's his last chance probably? And and they're like, we're banking on it. You know, they know that he had consistency issues. And and Carroll came out and said, this was Rawls. This was what that's why Michael wasn't there. This was Rawls outperforming Michael from a consistency standpoint. So right. I still think the potential like the game flow has to go the right way. But maybe Michael has some bursts left. Maybe he has something left for one game. Well, he he, have, he should have a lot of tread left on his tires, so to speak. I mean, <laughs> he's gotten very limited action. So it it just could re- could happen. It reminds me when he got very limited carries at different times, preseason, other games for them, when he could come in, Lynch was out, and he he could bust off a 45-yard touchdown run in one play. I'm not saying start him. I'm just curious to see what they have because it's kind of a – you know, I wonder if Fred Jackson saying, hey, you know, I've, I've kind of been a starting running back. Why am I not – Yeah, which is fair. It's – it's uh, but they need Fred for that particular role. So sure why, why destroy him when they believe – they have to believe they're making the playoffs because I absolutely I believe they're making yeah. the playoffs. So you you would uh, buy into Brown though. That's the headline. I'd buy though. in. This is very strong. Would you start but, Brown uh, over a Crowell in the same game? Ooh. E- I mean, yeah. how do you how do you not? Yeah, I would just be, because the the matchup the, the Crowell is. Would uh, you start that's brutal. Bryce Brown or Buck Allen this week against Kansas City? I'd go Buck Allen. Darren McFadden. Mm, probably I'd, I'd, I still lean Darren McFadden Matt Jones Ooh. Uh, who, who who's Washington playing I don't recall Washington is taking on the why am I losing this here Bills the Bills yeah yeah I'll still go with Jones I maybe I'll swing for the fences on that one just go brown right for upside all right let's move on we're going to talk about the Bengals and the 49ers right now Bengals head to the Bay Area take on the 49ers people want to know what's up with the big salad can you count on anything this week I I'm I still have confidence I still have confidence in the produce that it will regain its form of crispiness I doubt it and health <laughs> I doubt it I mean they I feel were, like the defense for for the Bengals has to step up in in light of Dalton's absence, and I'm not excited about Drone. Uh, ex- what we were we were never excited about Drone except for last week, right? Because you're never excited to eat your vegetables. <laughs> That's why he's the big salad. But we saw a level of success when Arizona went into the Bay Area. I mean, we saw we saw Drone getting all the snaps, all the touches. And he gives you, he's that 50-50 guy. If he can give you 50-50, you're very, very happy with that production level. And I think he could get there. It's the Bengals don't <clears throat> scare me to the point of he can't get 50-50. You have to start one running back for the Bengals, and his name is Jer- Jeremy Hill. He is, go with Hill. He's Jeremy Hill for me, too. Go with Hill. It's Jeremy Hill for me, too. Would you flex him? 
Hill? Yeah. Absolutely. Would you put him in as a two? Yes. Okay. So that's, uh, that's it, a decent level of confidence. Well, it, it, there's a decent level of confidence. There's also been a, a uh, clearing out and destruction of running backs of value. I do want so to remind that, that, people. That plays into it. I want to remind people that Vance McDonald should be back this week for San Francisco. Deep leagues, if you needed a deep league streamer at tight end, he did. He was very productive before the concussion. Yes. And, you know, he was hyped up a little bit, and then he got concussed, and you just haven't seen him. He should be back out there. If you're starting A.J. Green, would you start Marvin Jones Ooh. with A.J. McCarron? Yeah, maybe at a flex. But that's – you're hoping for a touchdown. All right, the Broncos head to Pittsburgh taking on the Steelers. This is the osweiler Roethlisberger so battle. I, I take it you're not playing anybody else from San Francisco? No. I mean, Bolden's had a couple good games. Uh, I, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. You may expound on my, my deep distrust for the San Francisco offense. No, just, okay. Just asking. Yeah. I mean, there's just too many other options at, at wide receiver. I'd play. I'll tell you who I'd play over Bolden. I'd play Tyler Lockett over Bolden. Oh, yeah. I'd play yeah. Tyler, I might play Jermaine Curse over Bolden. I probably <laughs> would, actually. Oh, come on. You want that bet? No. You don't want Curse versus Bolden? No, I do not. All right. I just feel bad <laughs> that we're even talking about it because you <laughs> won't let me move on to this other game. <laughs> All right. Everybody needs to know, is the Denver defense so good that this is going to make Antonio Brown and Martavis Bryant and D'Angelo Williams and Ben Roethlisberger and Heath Miller irrelevant? No. No. Okay. No. So disclose their grand relevance. Well, it certainly caps the ceiling. Uh, they've got this at a uh, – the, the wise guys have this at a 44.5 over under. So they're expecting a, l a lower amount of points. The Steelers are decently favored. Uh, so if you, you take the implied point total for the Steelers, then, then you're okay. Uh, Roethlisberger, we had this – Wait, who did the Broncos play last week? I'm trying to. Oh, Carr. It was and it, you. It was you. Sit Carr. You absolutely sit Carr, and you sit all the all the skill players for Oakland. I'm not going to sit them for Pittsburgh. I'm going to play Ben. Uh, assuming uh, you, you got to find that line, that threshold, so to speak. For me, you said yours was around Ryan, Stafford, right? I would not play Stafford over Big Ben. That's for, what I mean. For me, the line, line, the line where I kind of get wavy is a Ryan Fitzpatrick who's been great uh, the last three weeks. Do I play Ryan Fitzpatrick over Big Ben? And, and I, I lean yes, but that that's really, really fuzzy right there for me at, right now. Okay. So, Antonio Brown, you, I, I've told everybody keep him out there. But what Must about start, the, yes. here, Here's the problem that a lot of people have. They're worried about stacking Steelers. They're worried about... Okay, I've got Brown and Bryant, or I've got D. Will and Antonio Brown. So, are as you as an owner, do you hedge your bets to where? Okay, if Denver came out and gave a dominating defensive performance, would you want two Steelers out there or not? Like, because how many right. people are sitting? Would you sit? Let's say you had D'Angelo Williams and Antonio Brown, and you have the option of putting Denard Robinson out there instead of D'Angelo Williams. That's a or or Alan Hearns out there instead of Antonio Brown. Brown Brown is. The, the Denard Robinson. That's, By the way, Yeldon is one. officially doubtful. We'll just presume him out. Okay. For it, this conversation. The Robinson, that's a tough one. If I'm try, if I, if I'm going with Brown and D'Angelo Williams and Denard Robinson is an option where you can kind of uh, not overcommit to that offense. Well, that, that, that's the question. Can you, I can would you still, protect yourself? I would still go with both of, uh, both of the Steelers, <laughs> though. Okay. Well, people want to know that. That's the question that they have. I mean, it's, that's, it's a tough thing. That's tough. You also have people who have a lot of Steelers. They're owned by a lot of people. And the Denver defense. And my advice to people with the Denver defense and Steelers is to find another defense. This game's in Pittsburgh. If you think your offense has a chance and you've got Houston sitting out there on the waiver wire or, or somebody else that's viable, I would start a different defense. I would not put myself in the position where uh, I'm going to you know cut off my nose to spite my face, if that makes sense. Uh, what about... The Patriots. Would you play the yes. Patriots over? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'd play the Patriots defense over Denver if I was in that boat. So I would. I would not stack Brown and Bryant. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> two wide receivers facing a defense has given up two wide right. receiver touchdowns for the season. 
If I'm going to I hopefully you have a, another option. I, that's where I would draw the line. All right, my start of the week is in this game and that is Heath Miller. I love Heath Miller in this game. The short passing routes caught 10 of 10 targets last week. Seems to be back. Make sure he's healthy, make sure he's starting, but I like Heath Miller. On the other side of the ball, Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, any problems with them? Uh no. no. Vernon Davis. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Vernon Davis? <laughs> my thoughts on Vernon Davis are, I do recall them from Sunday. Okay, uh, stop uh, running backwards. Is Mr. that part of it, Mr. Davis? Just go, just go forward. Uh, there was, there's a a fish character in a movie that my youngest son makes me watch every single day, <laughs> and and the motto of that fish is to just keep swimming forward. For the forward is implied, sure, but Please. not for Vernon. <laughs> Please stop. Trying to wheel around and get an extra five you yards. Three or four catches where he caught the ball in the middle of the field and then wheeled backwards around. I mean, it was it was just silliness. All right. Let's talk about the Dolphins and the Chargers. We got we have to move on. We got three more matchups. We got the mailbag. All right. Can you start Phillip Rivers? I want to know. Oh man. You can? <laughs> <laughs> I think you answered no. I think that was answering the word no. Dontel Inman will be back. I don't expect C.V. Johnson. We don't have great options. We've had three or four games where Rivers has scored zero touchdowns. Find somebody else. Yeah, you find, somebody, find else. somebody else. That that is he so, could have a great game, but it, it's so disappointing. Well, because the schedule is lining up for him. Yeah, but he he lost the weapons. The team is is obviously. Uh, competing for the number one pick at this point. So Rivers is out. Gordon and Wood, Woodhead is done. Woodhead retired four weeks ago. Ridiculous. Uh, forced things. retirement from the offense because they want to give Gordon the ball. Which I, I, I understand it. I think it's, it's fair that your number one pick, you spent a high pick on Melvin Gordon that you want to get him going. I actually think that Gordon is an okay I do. lower running back this week because the – Bryce Brown or Melvin Gordon? Gordon. Okay. For sure. So Gordon and Gates are the two guys you could start here. Yep. Okay. Yep. Other side of the ball, Lamar Miller. We made a bet. Oh. Was it was it on the Join the Foot mailbag show? We made a Lamar Miller bet? Uh, oh, Jason you and, and I Jason, did with carries. You, you and Jason made a Lamar Miller over under 15 carries water bet. Yeah, and I feel okay about it still. I, I think they're very foolish if they don't give him more than that. The Dolphins are 4-0 this year. When Lamar Miller's had more than 15 touches. Uh, the, prob the problem is, is that they've decided that they don't want to give him that. <laughs> because uh, The problem is they've decided that might not they, be, don't, they don't like to win. Th I don't know if that's 4-0 and oh this year or over the last two years. But they when they give him the ball, he seems to produce. We see it on the field. But they've decided he can't handle a big workload or they've decided that they want to be... You know, I don't, I don't blame them where they're at trying to figure out what they have in Ajayi because... Uh, he's cost control for three years. Lamar Miller is somebody who's a free agent, and I don't think he's coming back. But even Ajayi didn't get work last week. Well, yeah, he was on the field for a couple drives, and Damian Williams was out there. I mean, there were work and snaps, I guess, is a different thing. Yeah, okay. But but they were sharing snaps. And, when I say work, I mean actually physically touching the ball. But sure. I, I, there's other things involved, I guess. Than not so we said if Landry's healthy, you start him. Let's say Landry, yes. Let's pretend Landry misses. Because right uh -oh. as of right now, he missed yesterday's practice after being limited. If he's out, do you bump up? You know, Rashard Matthews might be back on the field. You got really? Devon yeah. Wow, Matthews. And you got Devontae Parker, who disappointed people last week. Oh man, I would. So not. how do you how do you even Let's read that? What is going on here? What in the world? <laughs> you find it so funny when I. I do. I don't know why it's so funny when. Oh man, I just need to try and find some information. And then you then you get a, a movie trailer. Well, I this website that I rely on for my news occasionally has never had an autoplay video, and now I pull it up they and I get you. an autoplay video. They got you. Yeah. So Richard Matthews was limited on Thursday, so he could be back out there. Probably will be. That would be my gut. So is there anybody that you would start? Would you take a flyer with Parker if Landry was out? Yes, I would. I would. Eighteen still, targets has to go somewhere, right? I would still take the flyer on him, Can and you, it. it if if Landry is out, I will not play Tannehill. If Landry is in, I think Tannehill is an okay last resort streaming option. So, okay, so you, you answer my question. Cardinals, Eagles, Sunday night football. 
Carson Palmer, locked and loaded. Put him in. Head towards your semifinal victory with Carson Palmer. Absolutely. All right. I just needed a little bit of a an endorsement there. Oh tonight. yeah, yeah. I've, I've you you have to have confidence in the Cardinals' offense because one, they're the highest scoring offense in the league. Two, we've seen the Eagles in in recent games just get destroyed through the passing game. Twenty fourth against the run right now. Twenty. Or I'm sorry. Twenty fourth against the pass. Twenty eighth against the run. The Eagles' defense. Uh, they've coughed up 161.5 rushing yards per game over the last four weeks, and you mix that in with uh, David oh, Johnson. Oh, David, Johnson. David I, Johnson. Sorry, I was reading a different stat. Got caught up. So, no, you're good. Uh, so David Johnson is a, a – Must start. David Johnson or D'Angelo Williams? David Johnson. Yeah, I agree with you. I do. We have David Johnson as our consensus number four this week based on what we see in this matchup. I have met three. Jason has him at four. I'd, you have yeah. him a little bit lower. Uh, the only guys I had above him were Gurley, McCoy, and Peterson. So, that being said, David Johnson, juicy matchup, Sunday night football, all the carries, no Ellington. I love it. Yeah, you, you just look look towards uh, last week that David Johnson had a very strong game against Minnesota. Now, Minnesota's defense was a little depleted, but... You add on top of that that it David, two near touchdowns David too. Johnson was a <clears throat> fraction away from having a monster game. Yeah, you can start him confidently. Now, the other side of the ball, the Cardinals have held six of their last seven opponents to under 100 rushing yards, and you already have a mess in the backfield in Philadelphia. That being said, we have two starts of our week in this game. We have Darren Sproles being one of them. Yes. Explain that again. So, Darren Sproles. Why do you like Darren Sproles? In Darren this game? Sproles is the guy that I like. Uh, because the the Cardinals can't handle edge speed, uh, can, they can't handle really edge plays. Period. Where that's where Minnesota did the damage. We, uh, I'll still say I, but a lot of people thought the same way I did last week that Minnesota was going to get shut down. But they had a fantastic game plan to exploit Arizona in the beginning, in yes. the very beginning of the game. Well, and even towards the end. Yeah, I you're mean, right. No, you're right because they had those underneath crossing routes. Just, just yeah. getting getting tight end screens, just getting things over out to the edge, yep. caused a problem for Arizona. Now, I assume that Chip Kelly will have noticed these things, and he's been kind of leaning on Darren Sproles, Darren Sproles, anyways, the last few weeks. You get Sproles with that speed to the edge, that can create a problem. We saw Giovanni Bernard have a great game against Arizona because he creates that similar matchup problem. So it, it now when I say he's my start of the week, uh, he's still a little bit lower in the rankings. He just the upside is tremendous for Sproles. It's not like I'm saying uh let me let me pull up my rankings here. I'm not saying, you know, uh like a Jeremy we were just talking about Jeremy Hill, a guy I like. Am I saying play Sproles over Jeremy Hill? No. I'm not going that level. Just saying that uh, that Sproles in your flex is a is a great upside guy to have in that in that position. As long as you have a, a nice foundation, then Sproles is a great play for you. I agree with you. I agree with you. He's got he's got opportunity in that offense, and he catches the ball really helpful in PPR leagues. Really like the other start of the week is Michael Floyd. Love Michael Floyd. Yeah. Arians came out yesterday, said Floyd's playing at an elite level, just affirming what our eyeballs already told us about Michael Floyd. Love him this week, starting him over a lot of guys this week. That being said, roll out the entire offensive force for the uh, for the Cardinals. Yep. Because you don't know necessarily. You saw it last week. Brown, 65-yard touchdown. Floyd had a long touchdown. Fitzgerald had a disappointing game. He hasn't been in the end zone lately. He's the guy at the bottom of that list for me, but I still think he has the opportunity. Yeah, it, and we've uh, when I was looking up uh, Fitzgerald's stuff, he's actually been a much more of a force when he's on the road. And I think that's a, a just a thing of leaning on the veteran in a in a situation where a Brown Floyd that well I guess they're Floyd's pretty much a veteran now at this point but Brown's still a, a younger guy get that wily that wily veteran going in Larry Fitzgerald and and move the ball down the field totally agree all right Lions Saints Monday Night Football game prime time Drew Brees Woo! he likes to light it up. A lot of confidence here, especially Lions giving up. Uh, uh, giving up might be the just best way to sum it up. <laughs> I mean, la I don't want to. I've been like duly impressed and not impressed with that offense and that team because they came back. They came back from a bad start, showed a lot of resilience, 
and then flowed right back into kind of, you know, after the the Hail Mary, really. You just wonder if they just said, all right, this is not our year. We, we were eliminated from the playoffs on that play. They got beat up last week against uh, St. Louis. So. Which we saw St. Louis beat up the Tampa Bay Bucks pretty bad. So That's my, yeah, I know. And they're, they're such an enigm- enigmatic team as well. <laughs> yeah, they're where very up and down. They, they beat the Cardinals this year. The Cardinals have two losses. One of them was to, to St. Louis. So Drew Brees, love him. High tower, love him. 28 carries. A guy, the volume, the reliance on him. They don't have a lot to lose leaning on him. It's not like he's getting worn down from not playing in the last five years. Yeah, that's that's a that's a valid point of because I'm thinking, do they want to do that again where they just give Hightower an extreme volume? Now a lot of that was game flow where they were uh, running out of clock, but they might be doing have, that again. They have nothing to lose by letting Hightower <clears throat> do that. It just will run him into the ground, and for high tower, it's even better for you know. Let me let me have a chance here, so I can see if I can uh, stay in the league a couple more years. I, I don't want to. One of the things I've always said, especially over the last few weeks, is don't overplay the matchup. Play play the talent. You you need to pay attention to the matchup. Just don't overplay it. Don't don't just say okay. Stafford's playing the Saints. The Saints suck, so Stafford's a locked and loaded number one. I know some people like him a lot this week. I'm not of that. I don't believe that. Really. I don't. Do you? I, I put him at the end of the one category okay, because so you of still the matchup. Like him. Yes, but I don't think he's got as much. Uh, yes, he has upside, but I just don't. I don't think he's as safe as people think he is in this matchup. The Saints over the last four weeks haven't been exactly. Uh, they haven't been giving it up to the wide receiver Calvin Johnson uh, to the same degree that they had been, and this is a prime time game at home for the Saints defense. They've they've improved on certain levels. I just don't think it's an automatic thing. We saw Megatron struggle last week. You have to start him in this matchup. I get yes, that. Yes, yes. You're not sitting Megatron down, but do you, you know Golden Tate's a guy. I love target numbers have been there. I'm I okay love with Golden him. Tate. Nine catches, eight catches, seven, eight. So do you? That's his last four weeks. Do you agree with me or do you disagree? I I agree with you that. What are your What's your feeling about the Saints' defense right now? I know they're not. Anywhere near the top of the league, but I, I agree with you in the fact that I have Stafford as a lower one. I'm not. It, it's not like the week of uh, Kirk Cousins where they were in the midst of, R- of Rob Ryan of of meltdown where he said, "Okay, Kirk Cousins, he's the next man up," and he he ignited them with four touchdowns. I think that I think Stafford could still have a good game, and this this uh, if you're just trying to look for matchup of points, this very well could become that because of uh we know that breeze is going to put up points uh a, a, i guess a, a question of concern for the the saints is darius slay against brandon cooks if that's the what they choose to do of if they're going to shadow him at all because darius slay has been fantastic in the last few weeks so there is a concern of that is that going to stop me from bl- playing brandon cooks no not no. even close. And we will no doubt talk about this game at greater length on Monday. Implications for people and their fantasy teams and who we like. We need to move on. We normally talk with Chris Mina of the Fantasy Sports Network right now. We are going to share his daily fantasy insights, but we don't have him on the show this morning. We're going to go into the mailbag. 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 Without Jason. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We are way under. I think we you got. Are, yeah, you're right. We got so lost in the in the whole all the matchups and flying through here. We're you're already like, over. We're over an hour on the show today, and you know we haven't insulted well, him nearly enough. Here's here's what happened. Slowly but surely, this turned into our best show of the week. Oh, you're right. You're right. It is the best. It might be the best show we've done all year. You now that you say that, right? I'm trying to think back of all the shows. We've done a lot of shows this year. Uh-huh. This might be the best show. You're right. Might it is be the, the best best. show. I, I hate to... I don't, and I, I, don't even, I can't put a finger on why it's the best show. And it's not like us to brag. Normally, that's Jason. Jason's the one who brags about everything <laughs> for no reason. And we are generally very humble. But I, <laughs> even in my humble state, I can see how this is the best show. Let's go with the humble brag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, welcome to the mailbag. Let's actually help people now. How about that? <laughs> Here we go. Let's do some voicemail questions. I, I bet we're going to. Hey, guys. It's Alexa in Tampa. Hoping you guys can help me get to the finals. 
a big playoff matchup this week for me. Oh, yeah. Need to know with Dalton's injury, who do I start? Kirk Cousins at home against the Bills or Tyrod Taylor on the road in Washington? Please help me get to the finals. Love you guys so much. Thanks. Bye. That is a great question. That is a great question. That's a great question. And I I have my answer, but I – do you want me to let you know who I – I'm going with Tyrod Taylor in this one. Then it's unanimous. I know that uh, I do talk about uh, Washington is a much better team on the road, but Tyrod Taylor and Sammy Watkins are really getting it going. Uh, and it's so is Shady McCoy. So I think the, the offense of the Bills as a whole will be a little bit too much for Washington to handle over the course of the game, and I expect Taylor to uh, have at least a couple touchdowns. I'm with you. And, and with D. Jax's injury versus Watkins' ascension over there, yeah, that's I, great. it kind of leans me that direction. And Kirk Cousins – who uh, maybe the, careful, careful. This take is a little hot. Kirk Cousins has actually been pretty good this year. Uh, you like that? <laughs> you like that? Uh, it was a, it was pretty disastrous at the beginning of the year, but his play has improved. However, I believe he only has two multi touchdown games through the air. He's ran in a few in so that. That helped him out, but as far as passing touchdowns, so we only like, two multi So we like Taylor. Yes. Go with Taylor. All right, here's another question. Hey, guys. It's Brian in Washington. I love the show, but I have a quarterback quandary. I had <laughs> Andrew Luck and Brian Hoyer, who are both beat to hell, as Chuck Pagano would say. Crap. And my Crap. team is stacked otherwise, but as far as waiver QBs go, it's a bunch of steaming duties left on the free agents. So who do I pick up on this list? Uh, which of these turds will flush down the easiest? Uh, Jake Cutler, who kind of worries me because they also have Forte, so what if Chicago stinks? But uh, Jake Cutler, Jameis Winston, TJ Yates, AJ McCarron, or Kirk Cousins. So I'll take my call off the air. Uh, since I'm assuming that's the only option. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, oh, well it's the only option. And obviously this was sent in, I guess, before Thursday night's game with Winston already playing. So I'm going to cross him off the list. Yeah. You can't and, retroactively play Winston. Well, And I don't think you would want to. I mean, no. he, had, he had good yardage. but yeah. So for me, I'm actually going to go with TJ Yates. Yeah, it's – uh, if, if you feel more comfortable – you want to hedge against Chicago stinking – and not play Cutler, I'm okay with the eights. And for for Cutler, a big portion of that is Alshon Jeffrey. Absolutely. Is, is Alshon Jeffrey good to go? If, if he was, would you play Cutler over Yates? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Against, I'm gonna still say Yates. Against the banged up Minnesota defense, I would still go with uh I would go with Cutler. But if there's any concern over Alshon, yeah, I mean Yates, uh, that's <laughs> I know, but listen, what do we say? The Colts have given up not you have to yeah. pay attention to the trend. 96 points given up by the Colts might be Whitehurst, might be a beat up Matt Hasselbeck. I, I think the potential for Yates to have three touchdowns is actually very high. And I've heard that this DeAndre Hopkins fellow is uh, he's he might become a thing. Yeah, he's good, very close, he's very, very good. close to that. All right, next question, now, Yates. Yates was the Yates was the quarterback who won the playoff game for the Texans, right? Yes. Oh, he's 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 solid. <laughs> okay. Well, we didn't. He's a that. hearted veteran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep expounding. <laughs> hey, fan of football ballers, this is Diego Diaz, I'm running Valley, California, and I have a running back situation. I have Amir Abdullah, Belia Powell, or Matt Jones for an RB two position. Please let me know what you guys think. Thanks so much. Love your show, man. Wish we knew if that was PPR or not. Amir Abdullah, Blah Powell, and Matt Jones. And uh, I and, okay, so answer for both. I would lean. I would probably play Matt Jones in all in both. Formats. Really, I probably would. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Amir Abdullah. I know really? that really in both. Yeah. yeah. Wow. In P, well in PPR, I might actually go Blah Powell, but. Uh, or I guess Chris. I forgot Chris Thompson I, got torn in half. Well, no, he he he's, he might be back out there. But regardless, they, after being torn in half, Chris look, Thompson is back. Or, and let me just break something to you. And you know, without Jason here, it'll be accurate. So basically, Chris Thompson was not torn in half. Wait, wait, yeah, wait. Yeah, he, he's he's <laughs> actually 
hole. Jason Jason gave he me the assumption had, that he was torn in half. He said he had a huge tear. Yeah, well, I assume that means you're torn in half. No, 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 no. He's actually fine. <laughs> He'll be okay. Torn labrum might play regardless. Buffalo's not been as good against the run statistically as you think they are. The game's in Washington. I'm taking Matt Jones. I would go – I'm going to go Abdullah. The I, the Saints – uh, we've talked about their defense. They're they're with the passing defense being a l- slightly better, but the run defense is still bad. So, all yeah. right, all, all right. right, let's let's get to the next one. Hey, fantasy footballers! Uh, I just want to thank you guys for uh, getting me to an eleven and two season. Oh yeah! Uh, I thank you guys, and I also a debt of gratitude to Devonta Freeman, who I am having some mixed feelings about. I mean. I've got, he got me to the playoffs, and now I feel like I can't trust him going up against the Carolina defense if I do make it to week 16. Who would you guys feel comfortable playing over Devonta Freeman? I just picked up Tim Hightower, and I also have Matt Forte, a couple other people off the waiver wire. But let me know who you guys, who you think you would feel comfortable playing over Devonta Freeman at this point. Thank you. This week, Ooh. this me, week I'm okay with Freeman. Me too. I'm but, perfectly fine with Freeman. Uh, moving into championship week, I'd play both those guys over him in championship week. Yeah, I, I can. I'd play Hightower and Forte. I now, if Hightower that. poops the bed this week, uh, then it totally changes the equation. And Forte, if he do, if either of those guys doesn't look good this week, then I probably stick with Freeman. And uh, Jason had brought this point up yesterday, where and we took a, a deeper that? look. The, this guy. All right. This Jason? guy. Uh, of, of Forte's splitting situation. of it, it was very – it was right down the middle, and Langford actually out-targeted Matt Forte. So pay attention to that this week where Chicago could be – you know, they, have, they don't have anything to play for this year. The, do they want to get a better look at the rookie, Matt Forte, on, a, on an expiring contract? Are they going to bring him back, or are they just going to move forward with the rookie? Where for Hightower, he gets to take on Jacksonville, which we've talked about. Their running defense is okay, but with uh, with Drew Brees in there, why you why you like a guy like Hightower? Your probability for a goal line carry is pretty solid when Drew Brees is your quarterback. You, you, there's going to be points put on the board. It's can you get him from the running back? So, I- assuming that everyone that that Hightower has a good game this week. I'm more than likely going to roll him out in championship week over Freeman against the Panthers because that is just that's rough. I, I think what we said earlier, you can't just assume Devontae Freeman is going to be what he was for those power weeks. You can't do it right now. I know it's hard to swallow, but play the guy that's going to win you the game. You yeah, know? I mean. It's just too hard for me to make him an auto elite the way the offense is playing. 29 points in three weeks does not a lot of opportunities on the goal line make. <laughs> Thanks, Yoda. I think I said words. <laughs> Pat in Indiana, I can't believe I'm actually having to debate this. I thought I would go all year without using him due to injury, waiver while availability, and Frank Gore's performance. I have to now debate Frank Gore or Melvin Gordon. Ooh, half point PPR. Half point PPR. Help me, says uh, Pat. I might go Melvin Gordon here. Uh, what was well, – I don't know. Melvin you, Gordon? You would go Gordon? I think I'd go Melvin Gordon here. All right, I would – oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's insane. They both feel like they have the most oppressive ceiling atop them as they can. Like, neither guy has the potential to be great this week. I, I'll just play Gore. That's, I'll just play Gore. Stay safer, yeah. Yeah, Vincent in Rhode Island. Hey, guys, big fan Randall Cobb or Julian Edelman this week? Randall Cobb. Cobb. Either way. I agree. Kyle and Charlotte, Russell Wilson or Carson Palmer? <laughs> stay in the flames or go with the guy who's been steady all year round we had this debate uh, in the studio yesterday russell wilson russell, russell wilson yeah russell wilson i got those guys at one and two yeah so uh, I, I have wilson at one <laughs> <laughs> like, let me give you a number 16 Ooh. 16 touchdowns in four weeks i'm gonna go with russell wilson he's playing cleveland at home <laughs> <laughs> I, the funny thing about that argument is he's know, the only you, guy I would start over Carson over Palmer, Palmer this week it, it, with of, with that kind of confidence. Of that argument, you say you're like, "Wow, how can you not play him?" And then at the same time, you think, 
Uh, Because that's impossible for him to continue to do that. It may be impossible, but you're playing Cleveland at home this week. With a lack of running game uh, or potential lack of running game. And a perfect passer rating when you empty the backfield. You got to go with Russell Wilson. I just stay in the flames. Because not only does – I think Russell – does anybody think Russell poops the bed this week? No. That is the thing. If if that was a potential problem, you could just say stay with Palmer. But I don't think he poops the bed. And what is he? What is his upside? It's been five touchdowns for a couple <laughs> weeks in a row. His upside might be seven touchdowns. All right, this is the uh, both the best and longest show we've done in a while. So we're gonna wrap it up. We're done. Oh man, I had at least good luck this week. I have five minutes left. Hey, pay attention on Twitter. We'll keep the keep you updated at the FF Ballers with all the injury reports, everything you need to know. See you on Monday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.